In this video, I am going to teach you how to knit the originally lovely Christmas stocking. This stocking is knit in a wool yarn, originally lovely Lana, and is slightly felted to give just a little bit of structure and support so that it really holds its shape nicely. It's knit in the round, just like a sock. You start at the top and you work a double fold over cuff so that it has plenty of structure and support and can hang really nicely. This double fold over cuff is worked in reverse stockinette stitch, but you pull it upwards from the back so it's all knit. There's no purling involved until you get to the toe and the heel. So after you've completed the cuff, you work down in the round, you leave the stitches for the heel aside to work a ha an afterthought heel, you work down the foot, and then you finish with the toe. After you've completed the toe, you go back and you work the heel using, as I mentioned, an afterthought heel technique. The toe and the heel are both worked in reverse stockinette stitch, so all purl to match the fold over cuff. And the decreases along the heel and the toe are worked using a central double decrease technique to give that just lifted, slightly popped up decreased line as a decorative feature. The name on the stocking is added using a chain stitch embroidery technique and I will make a full separate video to show you how to do that step by step. This video specifically is only to knit the stocking and I will show you how to knit the stocking and felt the stocking and get it all ready for the name embroidery. If you're looking for the name embroidery tutorial, I will link that video here so that you can check that one out. So as I mentioned, the stocking is knit in originally lovely Lana yarn, which is a Highland wool yarn. This is the perfect yarn for the stocking because it can be felted, but it's still soft and nice to work with. So the reason that we felt this stocking, like I mentioned, is just to give it a little bit of structure and support. We're not over felting or really doing it to change the size or shrink the size of the stocking. We're just doing it very gently when we block it so that it can hold its shape and kind of stay in this nice stocking shape when it's hung up. It also makes the toe and the heel lay flat and everything just be structured beautifully so that it will last years and years of hanging up on your mantle. So the materials that you will need is originally lovely Lana yarn, of course. This stocking right here is shown in the main color of tabby and the accent color of natural. This stocking here, the lighter version, is shown in cloud as the main color and natural as the accent color. You will need 75 grams of the main color, so of tabby and of cloud and then you'll need 50 grams of the accent color in natural. The other materials that you will need are size nine knitting needles in a 12 inch length. You can use longer ones for magic loop throughout the entire stocking if you want. You can also work the stocking with double pointed needles. For the toe and the heel, I will be showing you in magic loop. So you will need size nine needles in a longer cord, like a 32 inch or a 40 inch cord to work the magic loop. You can also use double pointed needles again on the toe and the heel if you prefer. The hanging loop is knit using size eight needles. So you will need either a size eight circular needle or size eight double pointed needles. It's an I cord, so you'll be sliding down the end and working it. So I recommend using double pointed needles for the hanging loop. The other materials that you will need are a tapestry needle just to weave in your ends and then do the name embroidery. You will also need stitch markers, scissors, of course your tapestry needle like I mentioned, um, your usual things. And then to block the stocking at the end, we just need hot water and a tiny bit of dish soap. I will show you that part though after we have the stocking itself knitted. If you are looking for any specific parts of this tutorial, in the pinned comment, I have links to specific sections in the tutorial. So this is a very long tutorial. You can click on the timestamps in that link to 
bring you to that specific part of the pattern if you are looking for something specific. I should mention as well that this is also available as a free knitting pattern on my website, originallylovely.com. So you can follow alongside the video tutorial if you like to see the steps written out. You can also purchase the ad-free PDF on my site, on Ravelry, and on Etsy. I will link all of those below, as well as the links to shop Originally Lovely Lana yarn. To begin, we will cast on 60 stitches using a backwards loop cast on method. So we're going to start with a slip knot. Take your yarn. You can just leave a small tail because we're going to tuck it into the doubled rim. Make a slip knot just like that. I'll show you slower. So just cross your yarn over like that and then pull through to make a loop and put that on your needle to tighten up. So now for the backwards loop cast on, we're going to just wrap it around your thumb like this and then insert your needle through that first strand right there. So I'll do it a little bit closer and a little slower. So wrap it around your thumb and then insert right like that around your thumb and just like that. So you're going to repeat this until you have 60 stitches. It goes pretty fast um, as you get going and you can kind of see your loops. Let me focus it right there. You can see those loops look twisted around. The reason we do the backwards loop cast on method is because it's really easy to pick up those stitches and make that double fold over cuff. And I like this technique. Some people will, when they're picking up stitches like that, they'll use a provisional cast on method. I find that using a provisional cast on method makes it a little bit tight at the end. Um, and this way you always kind of have the same amount of tension, so it's not difficult to pick up those end stitches and work that fold over cuff. So repeat just like this until you have 60 stitches cast on, and I will show you how to work from there. Okay, so now I have 60 stitches cast on, and I'll need to spread these out so that we can join in the round. So just scooch those all across the needles like so and kind of spread it out the first round it's a little bit the stitches are a little bit stretched like that um but as you get further they are not going to be stretched like that that's just to start so when you spread them all out like this make sure that it's not twisted at all that little ridge should all be along the bottom and then we're going to begin just by knitting. You can place a marker to note the beginning and end of each round if you want. I think it's pretty obvious because it's where the knot is right here. So I don't generally place a marker but feel free to go ahead and place one if you want. Just again, make sure that there's no twist in your stitches all the way around. They should all be facing the bottom. And then just start knitting. I don't do anything special to join in the round. I just start going. So again, it's a little bit, it takes a little bit of adjustment to as you're getting started. If you knit English style, this is how It'll look, but I generally knit continental style. I just started out English there for some reason. So you're going to continue in the round just like this to create the cuff of the stocking. So I do want to show you quick. I'm just, I finished up that first round and you can see that it's already starting to look a little bit less stretched on the needle but 
you can see here, you have those loops that go back. Let's see, it doesn't want to focus, but those wraps that go around on each stitch, those are where we will pick up into. So you can see it's just super obvious right there along each one. So like I said, continue in the round just like this. It's super simple. Work six inches total, and then I will show you the fold over cuff. So I worked up until the point where I have the piece six inches long. So from the cast on edge until just, I measure to just right under those stitches is six inches total. So now we're going to work that fold over cuff that's at the top of the stocking and has the reverse stockinette facing outward. So to begin, just cut your yarn right here, leaving a tail to weave in later. And we're going to begin knitting with our new color. So this is the main color of the stocking. So what you're going to do is, I'm going to show this really slowly and detailed so that you can see very carefully how to do this step. Because it is a little bit tricky at first, but it gets really easy as you go. So you can see each stitch has a little piece that goes across, a little strand of yarn right there, right there, all the way across. So this very first one, the strand is actually like in that knot right there because the slip knot makes it look a little different. So that's the first one. So what we're going to do is take, this is a good guide, the knot is a good guide. You're going to take that and you're going to lift it up on to your needle. So look at that and you're going to insert that needle right through there. So lift it up and then insert onto that spot. You can do it from the bottom or the top, however you can see best. But basically what you're doing is just pulling that up and then you're inserting your needle into that first piece right there. And then the next one you can see is super obvious because it will just be that strand that's ready to go. So you put that up onto your needle and this tail right here, just tuck that in and then it's actually one less strand to need to weave in. So we're not knitting with this anymore. We're beginning with our new color. So holding the tail in my right hand and then the new color of yarn. We're going to knit these two stitches. So our first stitch and then the loop that we put on that needle, we're gonna knit those together through the back loop, just like that. So knit two together through the back loop. And then we have to pick up our next stitch. So move that strand out of the way from your slip knot. And it does want to curl, so that will be the hardest part of seeing where you need to go next. But like I said, that next strand, you have your slip knot, and then that next strand right there. So put that up onto your needle just like that that next strand another way that you can do it and this is kind of how i do it once i get further is you can lift it onto it with your right needle so lift it up with your right needle and put it on to your left needle however is easiest for you to see but it's just that next strand and it does get easier as you go so don't be worried we have one more, so that strand is on our needle, and then the next stitch, knit those two together through the back loop. And then our next stitch, it, the, it wants to curl less and less the further you get, so don't be worried if this looks complicated. You just have to keep going. 
So that next strand that kind of goes across right there, you can see right there. Insert your needle there, and then I generally put it on to that left needle. And then knit through the back loop. And now the next one, you can see right there, the next strand onto the left needle and then knit both those together through the back loop. So repeat this all the way across, all the way around, and that will create the fold over cuff that's the double layer. So just be sure that you get every strand and you don't skip any. So just make sure it's always that next piece and I'll kind of unroll it a bit more so you can see here. It's just those next strands, they look long because they're kind of stretched, but you can see. So this one I did because it's connected to that stitch. You can see that stitch comes through that strand. So there's the next one, next one, next one, next one, all the way around. And this is just what gives the stocking that more structured top band that makes it so that it holds its shape really well and can be hung really nicely for a long time. Um, it doesn't it doesn't kind of flop over and it still has that stocking shape. Just makes it a little more dense. So continuing all the way around in this way and then I will show you the very end and how we finish up this round. Okay, so I'm coming up to the end here and I wanna show you the last few stitches because it might be a little bit confusing as you're coming up to the end. So you can see I have four stitches on my needle still. It's super obvious because they're a different color. And then if you're using the same color, it'll be obvious by the tails. Um, but you will have, so four stitches there and then you can see I have it's a little bit bright. I don't want it to be washed out. You have one, two, three, and then number four there is kind of like a little smaller just because of where the slip knot was. If you're one off, if you have one too few or one too many, just skip one and you won't really notice a difference. I know if this is the first time doing something like this, it might be a little bit harder to keep track of them all. Maybe at one point you skipped one or you did one twice. Most of the time, if you just make up the difference here at the end, it won't really be that big of a deal. Um, but of course you can pull it out and frog it back one row if you want. So coming up here, it's a little bit hard to get those final stitches, but you can just lift that up. And I did switch over. I'm knitting these last couple English style um, I kind of go back and forth. And then that final one, again, is really a little bit tight, but you can just see it right there. It's a little smaller, so I lifted it. I put it on the needle weird. I was going like that with all of them. Um, so now we have all of those completed. And at this point, you can put a marker to mark your beginning and end of each round so that you stop on the exact spot um, or, or you can just follow the tails and go upwards if you don't have a marker. So the reason we knit through the back is just so those stitches kind of like stay open in the front so that the orientation, there's not like a little twist. So I should note too before we go on to work the leg, continue until it measures 11 inches total. So that means from the very fold of the cuff all the way down, knit until it's 11 inches. And then we'll make our heel. And the heel will be an afterthought heel. So you can see on this other one I'm doing, you'll have this little piece that will go back and work the heel later. I will show you how to do all that. So now just knit, continue with the main color in the round until the entire piece measures 11 inches. And then I will show you how to work the heel. 
So I'm at the point where the entire stocking measures 11 inches from the top of the cuff here all the way down to what is on the needle. And I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see this part. So for the heel, you're going to stop 15 stitches before the end of the round. So it's kind of a unique spot, but the reason for that being is that these tails are at the beginning of the round. I'll show you sideways. So this is the beginning and end of the round, and these are where the tails are, and that's where the heel is gonna be shaped right here, across the half here. And then the tie, the little loop to hang the stocking, will go up on this end. So it will cover up kind of this slight little jog. It's super minor, but it will cover that up. And then also you can weave in those ends and help secure the tie. So to start the heel, we're at the point now where we start the heel. Again, you end 15 stitches before the end of the round. And now we're just going to set some stitches, not aside, but like leave them aside to work later um, using an afterthought heel technique. So cut your yarn just like that, leaving a tail. Um, you could do shorter than that. And what you're going to do is knit 30 stitches using a different color of yarn. So I'll show you with this other stocking that I'm making. You basically work a little piece of a different color of yarn. And then what we're going to do later is take out those stitches and we're going to have stitches on either side, live stitches, and we're going to work those. But this just little piece is going to hold those stitches in the meantime until you finish your stocking. So use either scrap yarn or your accent color yarn. I'm just going to use accent color yarn here um, because that's what I have handy. You could use any yarn really, just try to keep the weight similar so that the tension between the stitches stays pretty close to the same. And what you're going to do is you're just going to begin knitting and you're going to knit 30 stitches. So just knit those, hold that tail and knit 30 stitches, two, three, four, So now we're done working the little piece for the afterthought heel. So we're also going to cut this strand of yarn right like that. Just leave a small tail so you can weave it in. Doesn't have to be too long, especially with a wool. You don't need to weave in the ends quite as thoroughly as like a slick yarn. Wool has a bit of like grip to it. So that's pretty helpful. Now we begin with our main color yarn again, and we just start knitting. So just those next stitches, you can see. And actually, I like to leave the tail in the front here just so that I can see where it's at. Um, you'll, I'll show you. You'll understand why in the front is easier when we get to the afterthought heel but you just begin knitting with your main color again. And then these tails just leave there for now. It is kind of weird that you have to like break the main color yarn and start with a new strand. But the reason for that being is you can't just carry it across. You would have a like strand in your stocking. It'd be kind of weird and it could pull it kind of in a strange way. So just break it. It's just a little short tail to weave in. No biggie. When you get to the end of this round, the last of these 30 stitches that you're now working again in the main collar, we're going to place a marker and we're going to denote that now the beginning and end of each round. So the beginning and end is changing locations from where it was. So now you can see we knit that last stitch 
in the main color, pull those tails forward so that they're on the right side. And then place a marker, place that marker right there. And now begin knitting, you just knit over those accent colors, just as though those um, stitches for the afterthought heel, as though nothing is different. You just keep knitting. And then when you get to the end, you just keep knitting as well. And then you will have just one row of accent color stitches. And this is where you will work your heel later. So I have the six inches of the foot of my stocking completed. So that's six inches from this afterthought heel stripe. And we are now done working the main color of our stocking. So you can just cut that. Um, let me make sure I'm in the right position. Yes. So this is the marker that's the beginning and end of my rounds. And... We're going to leave that marker there and we have two setup rounds to do actually which is a little bit weird but you'll see why as we work through them so the first setup round is all knit but we have to place a marker at the halfway point so after thir the first 30 stitches we're going to place another marker and even though the heel is or the toe is what we're doing the toe and the heel are worked in reverse stockinette so all pearl we still have to knit the first round so that that first pearl bump is fully the main color otherwise it would be like half main color half accent color so again just knit the first round we're going to knit 30 stitches and then place our stitch marker and then knit until the end of the round so first knit 30 stitches so we've knit 30 stitches and now we place that second stitch marker and now we just knit until the end of the round so until that first stitch marker that we placed so now i've made it to the end of the first round so to the end of setup round one and little note on this round so we're going to kind of change the beginning and end of each round just to get make it so it's easier to do our central double decreases and so that there's minimal jog right there between the beginning and end of each round the stitch is always going to look a little bit different but this way that i'm going to show you will make it look minimally different and this stitch the central double decrease stitch you can see it's a knit stitch and we're actually slipping this stitch on the first round and then every other round from there to get it to kind of pop up like that and that's what gives it that pop up knit stitch look kind of just a really unique decoration piece of the stocking it's so simple but that's what makes it look cool so for this setup round two right here we're changing the place that's the beginning and end of each round. So we have to remove this marker and then we're going to slip this first stitch purl wise with the working yarn in back. Make sure the working yarn is in the back because if you have it in the front, you'll go, you'll cut across that stitch and it won't have that popped up knit stitch look. So slip that first stitch purl wise working yarn in the back and then put that marker back on your needle. And now we're actually going to purl. If I'm working a lot of purls, I like to work English style. So that's knitting with your right hand. And then we're going to purl across to that marker on the opposite end. So now we're purling all the way to that marker right there. We're gonna remove this marker and then once again, we have to slip this stitch purlwise with the working yarn in the back. So slip it purlwise just like that. Put that marker back on. And now we're going to continue purling across to two before the end of the round. So two before the marker that we placed over there. So now we've purled to two before 
the end of the round. And now we have to work our first central double decrease stitch, which this is a knit stitch, so move your working yarn to the back. And then these first, these two stitches before the marker, we're going to slip these together knit-wise. So as though you were to knit, you're going to slip both of them that way. And then you're going to remove the marker and knit that next stitch. Tighten that up because it's the tail back there. Now to complete it, we're going to take these two stitches that we slipped and pass them over that stitch that we knit, just like that. So you can see we've completed our first central double decrease. Now we replace this marker on our needle and now purl until two before the marker on the opposite end. Okay, so now purl before one before the end of the round. I misspoke. So purl before one before the end of that round, and then you're to your central double decrease that you worked on the previous row. I'm gonna kind of straighten this one out a little bit and then tighten up that tail. Looks a little nicer. So we're to one before the end of the round and we're going to slip this stitch purl wise with the working yarn in the back. Make sure you put that working yarn in the back. Slip that stitch purl wise and now we're to the end of that round. So we're actually going to move on to the next round. Now we're going to slip that marker and we're going to purl all the way across until the next marker on the opposite side and slip that stitch as well, or purl to one before that marker. So now purling until one before that marker. It's always pretty obvious because you get to, you can see that central double decrease pretty obviously as well. So one before the marker, we're going to slip this stitch again, purl wise, working yarn in back, slip the marker, and then continue purling across till until two before the end of the round. So now we repeat those last two rows. So we've purled until the last two and now we do our central double decrease once more. So slip those two knit wise, remove that marker, knit one, and then pass those two slip stitches over and replace that marker. So you can see we have our second central double decrease. And now we're going to purl all the way until two before that next marker, just as we did last time. So these are the two, this is the two row repeat. So it's a slip stitch row and then a central double decrease row. And we'll repeat the slip stitch central double decrease until there are 28 stitches remaining. So that's eight times total, eight central double decrease rounds total. When it gets too tight for your needle, you will have to switch to either a long circular needle for magic loop or a short double pointed or double pointed needles for um, small circumference knitting. So whichever one, because your small circular needle here, oh, I split that stitch, um, your small circular needle here will get too tight. The stitches will be too crushed. Um, I'm not gonna go super in depth into magic loop technique in this video, but I will have another video that I'll link here and you can follow. So continue around, repeat those last two rows until 28 stitches remain, and then we will seal the toe closed. So now I've completed all of the toe decreases and I have 28 stitches left on my needle, so 14 on either side. If you're using um, double pointed needles, at this point then switch to, or adjust your needle so you're just using two needles and you have the first half on one needle and the second half 
on the second needle. So with Magic Loop, that's pretty easy because that's about how you already have it set up. So we will now just close the toe and we're going to use graft the toe closed with um, Kitchener stitch. So that is how we seal the toe. We're going to turn it inside out when we do this though because grafting replicates the knit stitch. So because we're working in reverse stockinette stitch, the pearl bumps, we still want those to be facing outward at the tip of the toe. So we're going to turn our stocking inside out, um, cut your yarn, leaving a tail. I leave a pretty decently long tail. I don't want to run out. I know some people have like rules of thumb of like three times the length, but just leave, I mean, about a yard of tail and then turn your stocking inside out. I find it easiest if I kind of lead with the needles. It's a little bit tricky, but if I kind of just lead through like that and then pull it inside out. Like so, you'll have to adjust it slightly. All right, so now we see, you can see here, our yarn is, and I need to pull that through still. So our yarn is right here. And then we have our needles all set up and ready to close with Kitchener Stitch, ready to graft close. Kitchener Stitch, if you've never worked it, it's a little bit tricky just to remember all the steps, but it's really not hard. So if you haven't done it before, um, I'll put like the, like, steps here so you can follow them but it's really not hard don't be intimidated just do it step by step and then it's pretty easy and I'll walk you through it so to start we front we're going to insert our needle into that first stitch on the front needle purl wise and then leave it on the needle so front purl on back knit on. So that was just the setup. Now we're working the actual repeat of the stitch. So front knit off, remove that from the needle, and then front purl on. You can do this in one motion, it saves a little bit of time. And then so we go back, purl off, back knit on, and pull it like tight, but not overly tight. Just like, you don't wanna like yank it, but pull it like a good tension. All right, and then we're back to the front. Front knit off, front purl on, back purl off, back knit on, front knit off, front Pearl on, back pearl off, back knit on, front knit off, front pearl on, back pearl off, back knit on, and just continue this all the way across until you've worked all the stitches. I'll show you here kind of what it's looking like because we have enough to kind of see. So you can see it's like duplicating a knit stitch as it seals it closed. So it's hard to even see where um, the Kitchener stitch is done, but it's right there. You can see those V's. That's, those are the stitches and it's just sealing it up, sealing it closed so that it matches and it looks super seamless. So continue that all the way across the row. So coming up 
to the end. We have two stitches left on the front and the back. So this will be our last full repeat of the stitch. So now we just have one on the front and now we have one left on the back, our final repeat. So now we do just the step that we have left for what is left on our needle. So for the last stitch on the front, we can only knit off. There's nothing to purl on. And then for the one on the back, we can only purl off. There's That's the only option. And that's how we complete Kitchener stitch. So you can see, you might need to like stretch it out a little bit for it to look like more smooth. Um, but you can see it's just continuation of the knit stitches down the toe. It looks like I left that one a little too loose, um, but it kind of like when you block it, it will tighten up. And then, so I'll leave this tail to weave in later um, and I'll show you what the toe looks like right now because it looks pretty seamless. So now this is our right side of the stocking. So the um, reverse stockinette stitch toe, you can kind of see how it just like the pearl bumps are there and it is very well blended in and it looks really nice. So it's just a continuation of the stitch that we were working. So here's all of our decreases and then on the other side, all of our decreases and they just lead really nicely into that Kitchener stitch. So we do have those ends to weave in. I'll do that later. And now I will move on and show you how to work the heel. So now I will show you how to pick up the stitches for the afterthought heel. So this that we knit right there with the um, accent color or scrap yarn is where we're picking up from. If you know of a lifeline, you can kind of consider this a lifeline. It's a little different, but that's where we're picking up from. So I start on the toe end just because I feel like it's easier to see where those stitches are. And I'm going to go straight to my long circular needle um, just because I find it easier to work with than a short circular needle for this. If you're working your double pointed needles, you can start with those as well. So where we're going to begin is, if you'll notice these Vs for the stitches, we're picking up the stitches below. So the main color stitches. And when a little like anatomy of the stitch, when you see the V, the leg is what it's called. The leg of the stitch that we're picking up is the one on the right. So like, that's picked up a stitch, that's picked up a stitch, that's picked up a stitch. Those are all picked up because I'm picking up the right leg of that V. So we're actually picking up the dark ones though. I'll make sure you can see the light is angled well. Um, and we're going to begin below the first accent color strand. So you'll see the V, it's like a half V to start. We're going to pick up just underneath that half V right there. And we want to make sure we get that half stitch because it's not a full stitch as it's worked. And if you don't go out all the way to here, there will be a weird hole left on your work. So you want to avoid that. So pick up right there, the right leg underneath. And then you go to the next one and you kind of just thread it under and the right leg of that V underneath the next one. So then there's the V, the right leg underneath that, and you continue all the way across. So you're going to count here. We're going to pick up 31 stitches total. So we held 30 stitches on the side. We held 30 stitches. Um, with that accent color yarn, but we're picking up 31 because you have that half stitch on either side. So the way I'll show you more um, what I mean by that. So I'm just continuing all the way across, picking up those stitches. If you find that it's really tight, you can use your interchangeable needles and pick up using an eight and then switch to your nine needle 
once it's on um, the cord. That might be a little easier for you, but I just kind of, I'm used to picking these up. The more you do it, the easier it will get. And the tutorials out there for Afterthought heels are really bad, so I would not follow a different tutorial. Sadly, they, a lot of them have you picking up the stitches without the scrap yarn, which is just a little bit confusing. So go all the way across, and then we're going to end just as we started with the half stitch there of that accent color, we're ending with the half stitch. So let me turn it a little, make sure you can see well. So right there, the um, right leg of that V, and then the right leg underneath the half white. So right there, and then here's our last one, right underneath like that. And now count and make sure there's 31 stitches, and then pull that needle through a bit, and we're going to turn and pick up starting on the opposite end. So we have to pick up 31 stitches on this side as well, and you'll see that there's actually just 30 Vs. So we have to pick up one extra. I'll show you what I mean by that. So we'll start picking up right underneath that V. Um, can you see that well? The, the white stitch underneath there's the V right there. We don't have half stitches on this side. And then continue across each one. Just make sure you're starting at that first white. Let me get it to focus there. Um, that first white stitch. So right there. And then all the way across in each one of those stitches. All right, so now we're coming to the end. You can see that we have just one left there. And now we have to pick up into, so move these strands. I'll make sure it's focusing well there. Um, move those strands out of the way and we have to pick up one more because we'll have 30. You can count to be sure. And we're, we have to pick up one more. So look at the V where we are and you just go the next one in the row. So right there, our last V is underneath the white, right there. And then move it to the side and look closely. How you can tell is where this strand is connected, the main color. You wanna pick up the stitch that's underneath the new strand of the main color. So tighten it up. Pull that tight so now you can see right there where that main strand is so we're picking up the loop that it kind of pulled right there this just helps prevent a little gapping hole at the edge and then you have the right number of stitches so we have 31 stitches on either side of our needles so kind of pull it through I just leave them like this for now and now we have to remove the accent color yarn between them. You can kind of do whatever you find works best. You can either cut or just pull. Um, I kind of do a combo. So you just pull out that white accent color across the whole row like this. So if you're using this wool, it might be like a little bit grippy because wool does um, like hold on to itself. But if you're using just any old scrap yarn, it might be a little easier to pull out. And this is why it's important to use a different color because then you can see your stitches and you just come all the way across. You can also cut the, the um, strands if you just kind of make sure you're only getting that accent color so it's not really wanting to focus, but um, if you do cut, just make sure you're only getting the accent color. I don't really feel like I need to cut, so I'm not going to just to prevent cutting any additional, which you have to be careful. So just pull across in each stitch. 
And then as you can see, we have those live stitches on the needle. So continue across, pulling out in each one. So now coming up until that last stitch, just pull that one out as well. And now you can see we have all of our stitches on our needles. This is just a tail from the toe. So get that out of the way. You can see we have 31 stitches on one side and 31 stitches on the other side. So now we will begin knitting the heel. Just as we did with the toe, we're going to be knitting with our accent color and we need two stitch markers. So make sure you have those and your accent color yarn. So to begin, I'm going to be working um, the magic loop for this whole heel. So again, I'll link a tutorial for that here. For the sake of time, I'm not going to do a full magic loop tutorial, but you can check out this tutorial if you've never worked it before. It's a lot easier than it looks. So I'm going to adjust my needles. So I have 31 on the first one, loop around, and then here's my second one. So you're going to start on one side. It doesn't really matter which side. And you're going to begin, you're going to knit the first round. So with your accent color, we're going to knit 31 stitches. So it's 31 stitches on your needle. And if you picked up that right leg, all your stitches are in the proper orientation. So just knit 31, knit all the way across the one side of the heel. So knit those 31 across and then tighten up that tail if you have to. And I'm gonna tuck that tail in, get it out of the way. And now you can see here, we have a bit of a gap between the stitches between the rows. So we're going to pick up along this edge and we're going to pick up three stitches. Although it's just technically one row, if you pick up three, you have a better, it's better to seal up that hole. And you'll pick up both. So I'm gonna make sure the lighting is good, but here's that first V that we're picking up into. You're gonna pick up both legs of that V. So you'll insert your hook into both strands there. Sorry, there's a truck outside and we're gonna pick up three stitches. So three rows, this first one here, and then this next one is right there. You can see, and then that final one is right there. It's kind of connected to that next row, but also kind of not. You just want to get into each, the whole V, we're grabbing the whole V, two, three. So pick up and knit. So we're just gonna pick up and then knit. So one and then the next one right there. And we're going to place a marker between stitch two and three. So pick up two, two stitches picked up and now we place our marker and now the third one, so the next V right there. I'll turn up the contrast here so that you can really see too. This yarn might be, it's a very shadowy day. So there we have our three stitches with that marker placed between two and three. And now we're going to adjust our needles because we're going to knit these 31 stitches now on the opposite side. So we have those stitches picked up and now we just need to adjust our needles. So as we did before, just knit those 31 stitches, those 31 live stitches across this edge. So coming up to the end, we just have those last couple stitches. So again, we'll, we're picking up three 
stitches here. You'll have to make sure that that tail doesn't get too loose because um, it'll just be kind of hard to see if it is. So you can see now we have, it's a little bit harder to see, but you need three. So kind of visualize this one. See how that's really loose? Even though we have a stitch picked up in that loop there, it's pretty loose. So that's where I'm going to pick up the first one. You can kind of like make up the difference with your heel. And this is how you avoid the hole. So you can see the way the light is turned right now. Right there is going to be one. And then there is going to be two where this tail is connected. And then this big gap is going to be the third. And that'll really seal it closed so you don't have a hole. So right there, insert your needle and you want to get both strands. You can't just go into the hole. You have to get both strands there. And then pick up and knit that one stitch. Pull it through. Tighten up that tail again because it's making it a little harder to see. So we have that first row there. So now that next one right there into here. So there you can see that hole and then into the next hole there. Right there. Pick up and knit. Whoops. It's kind of weird that I'm just using one needle, but I split that yarn. So use it as an opportunity. You can kind of fix that. So I picked up two and then put that stitch marker on between stitch two and three. And then finally that third one right there. It's a little bit tighter, but right there. Pick up. Just like so. So now we have our three stitches picked up on the edge and that marker between stitch two and three. So this marker here is going to denote the beginning and end of each round, this peach colored marker. I always use a different color for to note the beginning and end of the round just to kind of keep track, but you can also tell where your tails are. So that is our setup round. Now we're ready to begin working the actual repeat rounds of the heel. And I'm actually going to adjust my needles as well. So this is where kind of like knowledge of magic loop comes into play. Although this is the beginning and end of the rounds, I'm going to adjust the needles so that this is where the beginning and end of each needle is. So adjust those needles here now. And I'm going to purl about what feels like halfway. You don't have to count. Um, but that first round, we're going to purl all the way to the end, to one before this marker over here. So I'm going to begin purling and just what feels like halfway is how we're going to adjust our needles so that then our decreases are worked in the middle of the row it's a little bit easier and we also if there's a gap or a jog or um, whatever you want to call it between your magic loop needles it's at the fold the halfway point of the stocking so it's not going to be visible it just kind of makes it look a little nicer so purl just until what feels like the halfway point I'll do a couple more you can count if you want but it doesn't really you can adjust it in the future. So purl right there, that feels like the halfway point. And now I'm going to pull my needles through, just like so, and continue working across. So I'm going to adjust them like that and pull that through. And now continue across the round. And just remember, this is still the beginning and end of each round. 
but it's just not at the end of a needle, which is fine. You just have to kind of know that when you get to that color of a marker, it means it's the end of the round. So purl until one before that marker. All right, so one before that marker. And now we're going to slip this with the working yarn in back, just as we did on the toe. And then slip that marker and then continue purling until one before the next marker. So one before the end of the round. So right there, move that working yarn to the back and slip that stitch purl wise, working yarn in back, slip the marker. And now we have completed round one. So moving on to round two, we're going to once again, just purl until one before the marker. So purl until two before that marker right there. And then we're going to work our first central double decrease. So move that working yarn to the back, slip those two stitches knit wise, remove the marker, knit one, pass those two stitches over, and then replace the marker, just like that. Our first central double decrease. And now continue purling until two before that next marker. So until two before the end of the round. So now we're coming up until two before that marker, the end of the round, and we're going to work our final central double decrease. So two before the marker, move that working yarn to the back, and then our central double decrease. Slip two knit wise, remove the marker, knit one, pass the slip stitches over, and replace the marker. So that is our two row repeat. So you'll repeat those last two rows, one row where you slip stitch and one row where you work the central double decrease. I have completed my decrease rows and I have 30 sticks, 36 stitches left on my needles. So now, just as I did before, I'm going to work the Kitchener stitch. One note I want to make is that this is the end of the round, so it's kind of a different spot, just the way I set up my needles. You might have done yours differently. So we need to just adjust it to make the heel position um, so we can do our decreases. So we just pull that needle through and then separate it right where that first marker is, the beginning and the end of the rounds. So just like that. And then over here, separate, split this needle and pull that through as well. And we can take off this marker. It's not needed anymore. Just unclip that. So now we have our stitches, 18 stitches on each needle. You can go ahead and count those, make sure. And then we will work our Kitchener stitch to graft the heel closed. So a couple notes on the stocking. If you're used to knitting socks, you might feel like 18 stitches left for the heel is a lot. And if you were wearing this as a sock, this would be a lot. And you would want to decrease quite a bit more to finish your heel. Because this is a stocking and we don't want it to lay at a 90 degree angle or even really close to a 90 degree angle because it would give excess bulk in the heel and it wouldn't look as nice. We want to leave, so because of that, we want to leave a few more stitches here so that we're really keeping the angle of the stocking nicely shaped. It's just a little added detail that I designed into the stocking to make it really just like the perfect classic Christmas stocking. So to work this, I'm not going to show you the full um, Kitchener stitch again, but I will um, note the point that that is in the video so you can jump back and watch that again if you need. But we'll just have our needles and then again we have to turn this inside out. So 
I guess I shouldn't have pulled those through, but again, I just weave those needles through, turn it inside out, and then adjust, get it all situated, and we will work the, whoops, um, we will work the Kitchener stitch to complete the heel. So just like that, move this over, slide those through and then thread your needle on there and graft that heel closed. So I have completed the main portion of the stocking now. You can see here the heel is complete, the toe and all the way up the cuff. So it's kind of lumpy right now, don't worry, we will block this, but first we need to attach the hanging loop. We're going to use size eight needles and I'm going to just use double pointed needles for this. You can continue using a circular needle, but you have to slide the eye cord down to the opposite edge while you're working it. So you'll knit the eye cord and then you'll slip it back. I'll show you what that means, but using um, double pointed needles makes this process a little bit smoother. So to begin, you are going to put work, make a slip knot. So just cross that over and then put that on your needle and we're going to cast on five stitches. I'm going to be using um, long tail cast on. I just like it to be a little bit more sturdy. You can use any cast on method here, but I am going to use long tail cast on. So we're just casting on five stitches, just like so. And then, like I said, we're going to slide this to the opposite end and begin knitting. So this first round here, or first row, we're just going to knit across. And now we're going to slide our work to the opposite end of that needle once more and knit across again. So it's really just a one row repeat. We're just sliding it across and then knitting across that row to make a little tube of knitting. So it's a little awkward. My camera doesn't quite want to focus on it, but this creates just that little tube and we'll use this for the hanging loop. Slide to the opposite end again and continue knitting. So you can see that the end of our strand that goes across the back is right there, but as you get further, that kind of closes up and this turns into really just like a little tube of knitting. And the reason we're working on size eight needles is just because we want the loop to be a little bit stronger so that it can handle being held up and on a hook. So it makes it just a little tighter and a little more durable. So I'll work a few rows and then I'll show you what this looks like. So I worked a few rows here and you can see that the I cord is starting to shape. And as you work, the back does seal up pretty well. Those stitches are a little bit looser, but that will be behind. You won't really see that. And it just kind of makes like a little tube of knitting. So continue in this way, just slide it across, knit down, slide it across, knit down until your I cord piece measures about eight and a half inches long, and then we will attach it to the stocking. So I have completed the I cord eight and a half inches, and I'm going to attach it to the cuff of the stocking so that you can hang it on your mantle. So how we're going to attach this is if you look at your I cord, the front of it and then the back, although it does even out quite a bit, the back is not going to be as pretty as the front. You can tell it's just a little looser, but the front is really nice, tight, and smooth. So how we're going to attach this is lay out your stocking so that it's flat, the heel is flat and everything, and actually the guide you can kind of use 
if you haven't weaved in your ends yet, you can kind of use those as a guide where you're going to um, attach your cord. You could attach a little stitch marker there or whatever, but you're going to fold this I cord over like this. So take both the front of both ends and then fold it like that. And then we're going to attach it on either side of the center point, just like that, so that it's on the edge of the stocking. And then we're going to sew it down. We're not gonna go all the way to the top because if we go all the way to the top, then when it pulls, it will kind of like, over time, make our stocking a little bit stretched right there. So we're going to go about a half inch from the top and we're going to sew the I cord all the way up on either side. So to finish it off, we are going to cast off just to make it extra secure, bind off your I cord and then pull that loop all the way through. So break your yarn, cut your yarn leaving a tail a decent long tail because we can weave it in using this tail and thread that tail onto your tapestry needle. So now we will attach it again. You can kind of fold that. Here's the heel. It's laying flat and fold that cuff open. So you can see here, there's the little jog right there. So this is where the I cord is going to go on either side of that jog. And I think it's best to sew it on with the right side of the stocking facing you, just so that you can really see what's going on. So two stitches of the I cord basically go to the back. So the three, the front, it looks like three. So those V's right there, you can see one, two, three, we're going to thread into one of those V's, just like that. And now we're going to look at the base of the stocking, kind of lift up those pearl bumps, and you can see little V's as well. Um, more so in the dark, you can see. So one, two, three. So this is where we're going into. And I want to get the V, see how this V that I'm grabbing, it faces both that way. So it's like an upside down V. That's where we're going to thread into, just like that. And now we go up and go into that second V, just like so. And now right there, the second V upside down V. If you can see that, it's not really an exact science. If, if you don't see the V's obviously on yours, you don't have to be too worried because you can just weave it on, like sew, the, sew it on nicely and it will look good. Just try and keep it consistent and it will look really nice and even. So then in that final V on the loop, Pull that through and you don't want to pull it tight tight just a little bit tight um taut i guess you could say and then one more v here upside down v into both those legs so now you can see that that it almost looks like the knitting just joins in with the stocking like it's knit off of that basically so now we're going to continue to the next, the other end of the hanging loop. So again, just kind of hold it up and then look at the, the front of it. Just the side that looks a little bit better and fold it down like so. And now we're going to continue just as we did those three, we're going to do the top three on this. So 
one, two, three. Right there is where we start. Thread through, and then the upside down V that's next right there. And then right there, the next V on the I chord. And then the upside down V on the stocking. And right there, the next V on the I chord. And then finally, the last upside down B on the stocking, right there. And kind of just pull those a little bit tight. And now you can see how our I chord will look. Just really nice. So when you sew it down, now we have to sew the sides down. You don't want to pull it up too much when you do it like that because then it will pull up the side of the stocking. You kind of want to let the I cord like fold up and almost, it might seem like you're leaving a lot there, like you're lumping it, but you're not. You just, basically you just don't pull it up and go super tight there because then it will also make that top not look that smooth. smooth. Just fold it up gently and attach it that way. So now this part is more of an art than a science. We're just going to basically like go over and under between this row right there, right at the edge, up the length and down the other side, and then up this length and down this side. So move this tail out of the end. If we need a little extra yarn at the end, we can use this tail as well in case you didn't leave your first tail long enough. So again, just don't pull it up super tight. And we will begin, we need to first come up through the loop and then down through the next piece and in line. So kind of choose the purl bumps that we're going to be, the row of purl bumps that you can use as like a guide on where you're going to be working into. And you can go all the way back between both layers of the stocking if you feel like. Like I said, this is kind of more of an art than a science. So I'm just going to go through one like so. And then the next one, so I just went into that hole, now I'm going that one and now I came up through this one so now I'm going in through that one like I said more of an art than a science and actually I got off there well no that is correct that looks good and then just make sure you're going you don't want to keep it tight so go into the next one like that just kind of grab some of it into the next spot and then the next piece right there so now we are to the top and I'm just going to go in through the back of the stocking to get to or back to of the loop to get to the opposite side right there. And I'm actually going to go through, let's see here, one, two, three. Um, I'm going to go through this hole so that I am going down this ridge of the stitches. You can't really see it, but you just want to kind of choose a nice spot to be consistent and yeah. then I can go down that ridge and attach it to the opposite side there so so I'm coming up to the end of 
attaching the loop. I have one more to go to get behind that stitch again. And now it's looking pretty good over there. I think I'm gonna call this side good. You can see it's just attached really nicely, pretty strong. And now we can attach this opposite side. So it does look like it kind of, like if you were just to put it up, it doesn't seem super flat right next to it, but I kind of like the look when it's right next to that one. So you just make it look that way as you seam it up. And again, just make sure that you don't pull it too tight when you attach it. So kind of leave enough space at the bottom and we will jump over to this opposite side. So, so work up and then work down the opposite side. Weave in your ends and then I will show you how to block your stocking. So jump back on when you have your ends woven in. We will, I guess I should know, we will add the name, the embroidery part at the end after we've felted it. The reason for that being is that although we aren't felting the stocking to make it more or to change the size, we do, it still could get a little bit smaller or a little bit more dense. So we just want to make sure that we're adding the name after so that we are kind of adding it in its finished state so that it will be as smooth as possible. And if we added the name before we blocked it, you might get like a little bit of puckering at certain parts in the name. It would probably still look pretty good, but this way it will just look as good and finished as possible. So finish up attaching this loop and I will show you how to felt. So I'm losing light quickly, but I wanted to show you how to felt your stockings by hand. Again, we're just doing this very gently to give a little bit of structure to them. As you can see right now, it's still a little floppy and it won't look quite as cute when you have it hanging up on the on your mantle or the wall. So when we just slightly felt it, this will give it a little bit of structure so that it won't lose its shape and will look really nice. We're just basically like aggressively blocking it. So what you're going to need is a sink or bowl or bucket of water filled up with very hot water. This is almost too hot for my hands. So if you need to wear plastic gloves, rubber gloves, um, do that. I would if I had a pair. And then you also want a little bit of dish soap. We're just gonna put not a lot in there, about like that. It just kind of helps, the point of the dish soap is it kind of helps suds up the water just slightly. You don't want too much because it's really hard to rinse off but just slightly so that it helps agitate the fibers together. And then finally, you also want some towels, just old towels that you don't really care about. Whenever you're blocking something, a natural fiber especially, with such hot water, you always run the risk of color bleeding. These two stockings, you won't really have any color bleeding issues because these are natural colors there's no dye in any of these colors so it won't fade at all but regardless use old towels that you don't really care about so once you have your water and your soap you can just dunk your stocking and then what we want to do is really oh it's a little hot for my hands i might have to find gloves but you really want to suds it up and kind of work those fibers together, kind of just agitate it with your hands gently. Um, you can agitate, and some people felt in their washing machine. If you have a wa agitator in your washing machine, you can do it that way. But this makes sure that you're felting it just gently so that you still have that stitch definition, but you're getting just a little bit of structure, a little bit of support and just making sure that the stocking is nice and durable. Another benefit of um, felting like this is that it kind of makes your ends a little bit more like part of the stocking. So you don't have to 
weave them in quite as strong. I mean, I really weave in my ends very thoroughly. Normally I'll weave them in, oh my gosh, so long. A lot longer than I know some other people do. But with this, you can weave them in a little bit less. And I mean, I still weave in about an inch, but a little less and it kind of just becomes part of your work, which is really, really cool. So this water is very hot. I definitely wish I had gloves, um, but I'm just going to keep agitating the stocking like this for about 10 minutes. There's really no hard, fast rule, but with the white especially, you can kind of see that I want it to be a little more felted. So I'm just gonna keep working at that. Work it on itself if you need. However, just to agitate that up and you can kind of see that soap is just helping suds up our fibers. So continue this and then I will show you how to finish it up. Again, I'm going to work this for work at this for about 10 minutes, maybe 15. Um, and then I'll show you how to lay it out to block. Okay, so I'm getting close to being done. You can kind of feel that the stocking is starting to feel just a little bit different. It's like denser and it feels like more of like a fabric um, versus knit. And when you look, it's pretty sudsy. Um, you can kind of see there's less like holes. So you can kind of just feel it and find if there's any more spots that might need a little more agitation and then just kind of work work it over one last time it's definitely more like i said um with the tie more of an art than a science so just keep working it over until you feel like it's in a good spot you can't unfelt it but you can felt it too much so you can always go back and felt it a little bit more if you need um it's unlikely that you'll over felt it with your hands you would really have to boil it or um put it in the washing machine manually felting it like this you probably won't overdo it i want to really make sure the heel is good those spaces around the heel i just kind of rub it like that and my water is getting a little bit cooler so that's helpful but i feel like it um does feel better with really hot water. So just work it over one, one more final look and you can kind of see when it starts to get close, like the white is kind of a good example. You can see there's fewer holes in the knit fabric than there was before. So just keep working at it. It does take a little bit of manual effort, but it's definitely worth it. Like I said, it adds that structure. It makes it just really beautiful and that makes the stocking that will last a long time. So once your stocking is all the way blocked, I'm adding this little clip in because I realized I didn't mention it and it is important. So once you've rinsed out the excess soap, you need to kind of get out any excess water just so that it doesn't take quite as long to dry. So the way to do this is just take a towel and roll your stocking into the towel and push out the water. Do not wring your stocking out. That can kind of stretch it and misshape it. And it's just harder to get it in the shape that you want if you wring. So remember, just roll, push, and then you can form your stocking. I will show you how to do that here. Okay, so I apologize for how bad my lighting is here. Um, it's so shadowy, our sunsets really early this time of year. But I'm just now laying it out on um, blocking mats. You can use just a towel or anything um, that it doesn't really matter if water gets on. And just kind of shape your stocking. This is your opportunity to kind of get the position that you want it. You can kind of stretch it into place, make sure that everything is sitting just right and kind of just maneuver it how you want it. I want it to be pretty similar size to this one. It's gonna be a little shorter, I can tell. I might've blocked it just a little bit aggressively. 
um, but you can kind of stretch it into shape and just again take this as an opportunity to really get it the shape that you want it and then once you have it in the shape just leave it here to dry just don't mess with it anymore let it dry put it somewhere where it's sunny or gets some good heat and let it dry and then you will be really surprised I think when you see how it holds its shape with this little bit of felting and you can see there's still some stitch definition and it looks really nice but it's way more strong and structured and the toe and the heel you can really get them to lay flat when you do it like this as well so just work with it work at it and then let it dry okay so really quickly you can see here I got it to a pretty good shape. I might work with it a little bit more, but I also wanna note that if you have blocking pins, you can pin them. You absolutely do not need them. And you can kind of just stretch it, pull it, and kind of get it to be where you want it. One thing I always really focus on is getting the cuff to be even. And then another thing is if you have two of them, this is kind of your opportunity to make sure that they match. So just work at it and then let it dry. So now that you have completed your stocking, blocked it, felted it, and it's all the way dry, you are ready to do the name embroidery. So as I mentioned, that's a whole separate tutorial. I have this broken down into two separate pieces, knitting the stocking and then embroidering the name. So I will link that tutorial here and you can go ahead and now embroider the name onto your stocking. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions, comment below, or email my support email, support at originallylovely.com, and I can help you there as well. Thanks so much. Enjoy.